Hello and welcome to step number nine of my cheat engine tutorial. This one here is the first one that feels like real hacking. It feels good when you first complete this one. Uh, what we're doing here is it's a little game. There's two computers that each have 500 health and there's two human players that have 100 health each. And every time they get attacked, they lose some health, but the computers have way more health, lose less health, and if you restart the game and autoplay it, you can see the players barely attack the computers at all. So what we need to do here is first find the values of some of our health. Go player for example. Now we're down to 94. Nothing found. So let's try searching for a float. 92, so there, that would be our first player here. So the way this one works is the same function deals damage to every player and well, all four players, so both humans and both robots. So if we were to just simply find out what writes to it, deal the damage, and just knock the code out, you can see Dave and Eric don't take damage, but neither do Hal and Kit. So that's not going to help us kill the computers at all. So let's just restore that with what it's supposed to be. Go back a little bit. And what we need to do is similar. We need to find out where it writes the address, find out which instruction it is that actually deals the damage. Now we want to click on it and find out what addresses it accesses. And this will get us the health address of all four players, both humans, both computers. And then I paid attention, I made sure I hit Dave and Eric first so that the first two are our players and the bottom two are our computers. So you just want to select all four of them. You need to dissect the data, hit OK. Structure name doesn't matter. Yes, we want to fill in everything by default. And what this does is it'll take these, uh, the addresses of our player base. So you can see here it accessed 45C and in the instruction our offset was four so it found the structure base for us added them all into here and now we're looking at here's our player structure for dave here's a player structure for eric and here's the structure for hal and here's a structure for kit so what we want to do is find some way to differentiate between both our players and both the computers so we want to find a value at the same offset that is the same for Dave and Eric, the same for Hal and Kit, but different between the two humans and the two robots. So quickly looking through, we can see this one's green, which means it's the same for all four. This one here, plus four was our health, we already know that. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure what it is, but it doesn't appear to be anything of use, neither does that. But this one here, we have one one and two two, so it's probably the team that we're on. So, uh, yeah, four, three, four, four, and three, four. So this one wouldn't work either. So we have to use our player structure plus 10. We want to make sure it's one, then we don't deal damage. And if it is two, we just want to immediately kill the enemies or something. So let's store this off to the side a little bit. Don't need this anymore. Don't need that, but we need to keep this. So what we want to do here is we want to hook this instruction we want to jump the code to somewhere else that we can actually write our own code to decide how much damage to deal to who so to do that you can hit tools go down to auto assemble template and you want to do an aob injection that's an array of byte injection and we'll just name leave that all default and what it'll do is it'll actually grab these addresses so it's eight nine four three oh four D9EE, and while it's generating this uh, template, it will verify that that is unique. But if you want to check yourself, you can copy it, start a new scan for an array of bytes, paste it, and you'll see nothing comes up at first. It's because we need to make sure that we don't care if the memory is writable. We don't care if it's executable. We just need to find that array of bytes. Try it again, and there's the one instruction the one address, which has the instructions that we are modifying. So go back to here, 
and right now all it does is copies the original code and jumps back to return which just goes back to the area right below so it'll jump back to here uh, we can quickly save this and you can sort of see how it works so right now we're looking at a live memory view of all the instructions in this area and as soon as we enable that script you can see it just jumps to zero zero copy that and you can go to address jumps there it does the same two instructions and then it jumps to here which is one instruction below the jump that we just added. So right now we're not doing anything except adding a jump, doing all the instructions somewhere we can modify, and then jumping back to the original code. But if you double click on the script here, we can now modify this so that if it's a player, it sees it doesn't do anything, or it heals us or something, and if it's an enemy, it'll just instantly kill them. To do that, an easy way is to add two labels well, so this is assembly here, uh, well this part here at least, and you're going to need to learn some assembly for game hacking. It's not extremely difficult, but it does take a little bit of time just to sit there and learn, kind of memorize some instructions, how stuff looks. But for this you can follow along and I'll try and explain each step like normal. Uh, well enough I mean. So create a label. Uh, and we'll just call it kill. So if we see an enemy, if it's one of the computers, we just want to kill them immediately. Let's go to right here. We can now use the label, so kill. So if we jump to kill, it'll jump into here. We can just copy this code here. And instead of moving whatever EAX stores, let's just move zero. Let's, if it's a computer, so if we jump to kill, we just immediately want the computers to have zero health. Now, right now, this won't do anything because we're not actually jumping to here at all. But if we do a CM CMP, which is compare, EBX plus, I believe it was 0, 010, yeah, plus 10. And we want to compare that to a 2. So now it'll compare to EBX plus 10, to, which is 1 for the players, 2 for the computers. It'll compare that to 2. And then you want JE, which is jump if equal. So if it's equal to 2, we just want to jump to kill. And if it's not, we can get rid of that completely so the players don't even take damage. And then they'll both jump back to return, which is... Where is it? Which will just jump back to right in here. So let's hit OK. Let's... Oh, whoops. That is not lobble. That is label. Okay, so now before we actually execute it, let's click it. Let's see, it jumps back to this address. Let's go there and check it out. So it'll compare the offset of 10, which is which team you're on, I'm assuming. One for the players, two for computers. Compare it to two. If they're equal, it'll jump past these two instructions right into here. It'll move zero into their health, which is plus four. And then it'll just jump back to where we were executing before. So as long as I didn't totally screw that up, attacking the players doesn't do anything because it is just jumping back. Attacking a computer immediately kills them. And you can restart the game. You can see it still works. And then if you hit restart game and autoplay, which is what we need to do to actually complete this, you can see the players don't take any damage. Both computers died immediately. And that's it for the shared code hooking.